hi guys welcome back to my channel today thank you so much for choosing to spend some time with me today thank you for coming on here if you're a returning subscriber thank you so much for your continued support and if you're new thank you for hopping on here today on this channel we talk about everything that has to do with perfumes we are perfume enthusiasts and we love our perfumes we love our fragrances here all right so today i wanted to review a few samples in my collection so <laughs> i'm doing like a video a day this is the season because i've got more time on my hands i'm not working you know work starts like in two days work today is sunday work starts on tuesday and so i said okay let me do like a video a day so that i'll get enough content out to last the rest of the week or even two weeks because i know that when we go back to work it's going to be really intense so i just thought to put out as much content as i can so that in the periods when i'm not able to you have something to watch anyways guys so today i'm looking at a number of um samples in my collection i've got quite a lot of samples you know and i get these when i buy perfumes i get them from the perfume store and all that i haven't really had the time to really sit down and sort through them so i did that last week and i thought okay i could also review some samples in addition to the full bottles that i have and maybe from the reviews i'd even have a chance to understand these samples well enough and know if i want to get like full bottles that's you know ascertain if they're like full bottle worthy so anyways i've got five of them today three of them are like niche fragrances i've got like two regular designer fragrances Alrighty. so i'll go straight into the business of the day today i'll start with parfums de mali's Aphelia, and that is this one right here so the way this will run is like a first impressions type of thing i've sprayed some of them before but it wasn't with the intent of reviewing i just got the samples and sprayed so i didn't really have any i didn't form any impression from my prior use of these samples therefore this video will be somewhat like a first impressions video for um f these five samples so for performs the mali um athalia it reads, the elegant and refined fragrances company renews the splendor of the 18th century through its original concept when the greatest perfumes were created for King Louis the 15th in tribute to the prestigious horse races he fervently admired and initiated. I really love when perfume um, designers or companies like give some context or history to the fragrances it adds a lot of mystery so athelia boasts an opulent and highly feminine floral woody musky olfactory signature its heart combines powdery iris and delicate orange blossom enveloped in mysterious amber and caressed by white musk all right this is quite a romanticized description but let's see what do i get here Okay, so in this, the base or the top notes are orange blossom, the middle is iris, the base is white musk and amber. So in terms of the note composition, it's quite straightforward, not too many notes in here. Um, it's really powdery, honestly, when I spray. And I'm going to spray it here just so we can get a whiff of it as we speak. Right. So, yeah. Yeah this is really powdery again thanks to the iris it leans quite feminine it's really sexy it's dark it's classy and let's see what the dry down dry down feels like mm. the you know it's really classy up in the opening and then the dry down seems very I don't know the word is comforting and maybe that's the musk talking because you know musk and amber they're the usual suspects when it comes to dry down for majority of designer and niche fragrances so 
I think that somewhere between the musk, the white musk and the amber, there's something quite comforting coming out. But in all, I'd say that this is really, it smells quite sexy. I would wear this at night, maybe on a first date. You know, it would add to sort of like the mystery and it will sure leave an impression. So, Perfumes de Mali Athelia for me at first sniff, I really do like it. I like that um, musky thing going on. I like the orange blossom mixed with the powdery iris. I feel like it's a great blend. There's not too many notes fighting for attention here. So, it's definitely something that I would want to try over time and see how comfortable I am with this. So that is Parfums de Mali. We would be considering for further use. All right. <laughs> All right, so next up we've got Initio. I've seen so many fragrance reviewers talk about Initio in general, um, but I haven't used it before. I don't have anything from this line in my collection. I just got this, you know, from the shop where i bought my last batch of perfumes so this one is called blessed baraka it's an eau de parfum and let's see it's literally amber musk and sandalwood in terms of notes let's see what's written inside it says an aura of sublime charisma baraka is a divine blessing on the path to determine one's own destiny blessed baraka oscillates between power and appeal an invitation to spiritual awakening and human grandeur leaving the crowded intoxicated by your aura okay maybe they meant to say leaving the crowd intoxicated by your aura through the mystical force of this fragrance wow <laughs> These guys put some time into describing the fragrance, but anyways, I'll keep it simple, right? What do I get here? I get wood, some spice, and more wood. This is really like animalic smelling to me, and I'll just spray it again just to remind myself, but yeah, it is wood. It's animalic. It leans more unisex than feminine to me so i know that some of us who like like this bold animalic fragrances which is not a bad thing it's just for me it's not i wouldn't smell this and think feminine i'll smell it and think first masculine and then secondly oh okay there may be some females who might like this so that's why i'm saying that it leans more unisex than feminine it is not really my style to be honest in terms of what i get from this i get some spice like i said and some wood i actually even get some tobacco-ish thing going on so it's definitely that mysterious spicy you know woody uh, fragrance that sort of thing that gives you like jazz club vibes you know smoking on your cigar type of vibe <laughs> you know so it's definitely it's very edgy it's something that you have to be really bold really out there to pull off um maybe not for the more feminine leaning uh type of woman but definitely a nice one maybe not just my style so for this one for initial blessed baraka i'm not exactly sure that i'll be going for this maybe in terms of layering it will work but in terms of just a fragrance on its own no i might not go for this all right next stop guys we've got this one was hiding <laughs> so we've got lady korloff so lady korloff is by korloff Paris. the top notes here are pear mandarin orange and actual orange the middle has tubers and jasmine african orange flower and the base is musk sandalwood and virginia cedar okay so what do i get here let me spray it again just to remind myself of this fragrance lady corolla okay so oh, okay there's no spray it's just like a 
you have to kind of smell it. Mm. I really like this smell. I remember it now. I know that I tried it on before. My son is somewhere at the back trying to get in. Let me read what's at the back here. It says, born of the artist's palette, deep in the forest of the mind, your majestic scent borrowed from home reflects your gift to perfection. Your provocative tone lights a fire, burning soft and fruity, crunchy pear sharp tangerine smooth with velvet with orange your heart bursts with a bouquet of jasmine and tubers before a deeply sensual glamorous fine finale produces a woody meld of cedar and sandalwood picked by a sniff of musk my goodness who are the guys that write these things man these are some <laughs> These are some hardcore poetic, very nice um, lyrics right here. Anyways, what do I get from Lady Corlov? So for me, I definitely get the citrusy sweet opening. And I get a hint of the tuberose and um, the mosque somewhere as it dries down. It smells to me like um, Guolan's Blooming Bouquet. I think I've reviewed that on my channel as well. It definitely leans in that direction for me. I think this leans quite feminine and it seems like something that would be crowd-pleasing, very mass-appealing, in my opinion. It smells like something I can wear literally anywhere. So it smells like something that would be quite versatile, um not offensive i like how it smells i love the the pear and mandarin orange in the opening i like the sweetness and tartiness i get i like the tubers and jasmine combo in the middle i find that that blend it's not like obnoxious so it's not heavy on the jasmine or the tubers i think the concentration in the middle is just enough to give you the depth that you need from those two notes without making it too overpowering um at the base you also have the grounding musk sandalwood and virginia etc and i find that the musk and the sandalwood here are quite prominent and they kind of help to just make the fragrance not too sweet you know, so that in the dry down, you definitely get the sexiness that the mosque exudes. So I really like this. I think it's something I might be giving a try. It definitely is something that um, is up my alley. So I, I would be giving this a try in terms of maybe not a full 100 ml bottle, but if there are like smaller bottles of it, I definitely want to have it in my collection. I love it. Great. Okay, next up, guys, we've got Roberto Cavalli Paradiso, and that is this one right here. So we've moved away from niche, and we're coming into the designer world. So let's see. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. This is really very nice smelling. This is what the bottle looks like, and it says it's a woody floral fragrance, sophisticated, sparkling, and sensual. Mm-hmm all right so this smells in the opening like again this is another one that smells like Golan's blooming bouquet so this one and lady Koloff are sort of in the same family so it's described as woody floral sophisticated sparkling and sensual like i said it opens quite citrusy to me um when i look at the note profile it's got bergamot and mandarin in the opening and there's jasmine in the middle so that's why it smells like lady Corloff, because lady Corloff also has that jasmine in the middle and it's got mandarin orange and orange at the top so there's citrus at the top the jasmine in the middle and this also has that right and um I get that jasmine as well, but I feel with this one as well that it's so well blended that it's not obnoxious. So I like that. The base had some woody accords of cypress, 
it says um, something pine and pink laurel now I'm not sure what those are I don't even know what they smell like but like I said I get the citrus I get the jasmine and it's really well blended and the effect is something that comes off quite sensual I love this the way I feel about Lady Coral Love is the way I feel about this so I'll get either or because obviously I can't have both of them smelling the same way in my collection so I'll get one or the other but it's not a bad one I really like it Roberto Cavalli this is called Paradiso okay then finally we've got Frank Olivier uh oh it's good enough yep so this is Frank Olivier it's called Bamboo that's spray so we can get right into it okay so what is bamboo supposed to smell like? I'll quickly go through the note profile so that we can get a sense of what it's supposed to smell like. This has violet, ivy, and black currant at the top. It's got freesia, lily, ylang ylang, and rose in the middle. And then it's got vetiver, silver, cedar, and musk at the base. What do I get from Bamboo by Frank Oliver? I get a clean, fresh opening that leans somewhat green to me. I don't really get the black currant. The rose, I think, is just a hint of it. I get it, but it's not like the kind of rose you have in Lancome's Idol or Trezor, you know, that sort of thing. You don't, it's not heavy on the rose, but there's definitely a hint of it there. Um yeah so i get that and then uh, i get a slight hint of the musk and the cedar as well so in my opinion i feel like you know it's a good blend of the um maybe the violet and the freesia because i get those two a hint of rose and a hint of cedar and musk at the base nicely blended but a lot of people when i research this say that is not very long lasting of course this is like a first impressions video so i can't really comment on that but you know frank olivier is like a it's a designer fragrance but it's a little bit on the lower end of the price spectrum so it's not a very expensive um designer fragrance of course i feel like with the less expensive ones um aside from those who are trying to prove a point so that they can get people interested and then take up their price point at some point i feel like they are more economical when it comes to you know the concentration of the ingredients in the perfume so if it's not long lasting i wouldn't blame them because i mean it's not at the same price point with the top end or the higher end designers either way i'll say i'm a bit undecided on this one because nothing stands out to me here so bamboo by frank olivier yeah i'm not really sold on it yet so guys this are my five testers that i wanted to share with you i hope you enjoyed this video i'm definitely going to be trying out um i'm going to be trying out athalia i'm going to be trying out lady korloff or roberto cavalli and that's where we end it today so hopefully i see you on another video thank you so much for hanging out with me today and have a blessed and lovely night. Bye. Thank you.